Hi guys, this week I'm going to be repairing the hairline cracks on the side panels. I have no idea how serious they are, uh, if they're deep, if it's just the paint, if it's the um, fairing compound or if it's actually the butt joint uh, which gave way. So there's only one way to find out. It doesn't seem to be any failure on the butt joint and to be honest there's no sign of water ingression anywhere so let's have a look at the, the other side again doesn't seem to be any failure on the butt joint my guess was just the fairing compound or the paint which cracked. Some of the guys have a, th have a theory that because of the black color and since we have like 40 plus degrees on summer here that the epoxy might have gone softer or pliable or whatever the correct term is and that allowed for some movement on the panels which cracked the paint. What do you guys think? Let me know of your theories on the comment section below. Okay, so there's no major fail on this joint. These are not scarf joints, these are butt joints. They get the um, structural strength from a strip of plywood which is glued on the other side, from shine logs to the inals. And in this case, because I made the, uh, the mid seat uh, bigger, it actually goes across that as does the, the wooden support for that seat. So I'm pretty sure this won't break in half, <laughs> but I would like to um, avoid having this um, crack on the paint again. Um, glass fiber seems a bit overkill at the moment. So I'm gonna do something that Brian suggested on um, Goat Island Skiff Facebook group, which is opening just a V-notch there and refilling that with epoxy and microfibers. Um, then I'll just sand it, recoat it with uh, fairing compound, a bit more sanding, primer, paint, but one thing at a time. <laughs> Let's start. I'm gonna start with this little saw to create the path, and then I'll use this one. That's it, I think that's enough. There was no hint of cracking there at all, on this side or the other, so that will do. And Brian, if my boat sinks because of this, I'm blaming you, dude. <laughs> totally your fault. I've restocked the microfibers now. Ready for another project. I don't want this to be protruding at all because um, this microfibers is quite hard to sand. So I'm gonna put it just enough and then when it's dry, I'm gonna put micro balloons over it and sand it.
Time for the 300. That feels quite smooth, so I'm gonna wipe it clean with some acetone and then I'm going to apply some primer. And then I have to wait for it to dry. This is a simple job, but it takes ages because you always have to be waiting for stuff to dry, to get tacky, to... Uh, good thing that I've got a lot of varnishing still to do and that's what I've been doing actually. Rudder or tiller. Brother and other bits and bobs. Right, acetone. Now let me try to show you a tip to pour how to pour paint without making a mess. And the can is nice and clean for you to close again. That's it, now I have to wait for it to dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to apply another coat of varnish there and then I'm going to edit the video because it's Saturday and I haven't even started. <laughs> First cold, dry, time for the second one. So this was my interpretation of Brian's suggestion. I hope it works, it seems to have worked for his bolt, which is also black by the way. Coincidence? Anyway, I've got a lot of sanding and plating to do, this horrible black stuff, uh, but I won't bore you to death with that. So guys, stay safe. I'll see you next week.